You know what I do really well on this channel? Deliver you awesome value in education and sometimes entertainment and reply to all the comments that you leave down below in every video, at least the valid ones. But you know what I suck at? Replying to all the social media things that you send me on Twitter and Instagram and DMs. But let's fix some of that. I just finished painting my living room, which took a long time, and I figure, I wanna go through some of the things that I've missed on Instagram and Twitter that you've sent me and give you some recognition and how I can help. So let's just skip the intro and just dive right into it. This is gonna be a fun one. I'm actually excited because I haven't seen any of these before. So I don't even know what they're gonna say. Hopefully all good. All right, just to let you know, I'm not picking any favorites here. No favoritism on the channel, except for YouTube channel members. Hey, you can become one down below. I kind of just picked whatever I could easily find on Twitter and Instagram. And if you wanna send me any of your stuff, hey, Follow me on my social accounts down below because I would love to grow that. But let's start strong on Instagram from Edward Garnett, who sent us a picture of his artwork. And he said, just want to show you my work. I've been painting for about a year now. Thanks for all your help. You're welcome, Edward. And thank you for all of your support. I'm going to give Edward two pieces of advice here. I already gave him one, but hey, it's best to reiterate for you out there. When you're making mountains, Think about the angles of mountains and how they're going. You want to create focal points. They shouldn't all go in a straight line. Nature doesn't grow in a straight line. Make sure you add some bumps and some ridges and different heights because it's really going to add to your painting and it's going to create focal points depending on how you kind of angle your mountains. Number two is go back and add some highlights on top of your snow banks. This is gonna really add a lot of depth as you blend them down and in, because it's gonna push each bank further and further back naturally, really building depth in your painting. Bravo for trying a cabin, because they're freaking hard. <laughs> All right, next we have up is Dan Geobel Art, or perhaps Geobel, not sure how it's enunciated. Sorry if I slaughtered your name, buddy. He writes to us, you're dead on with gambling. I will still use my BR paints till they're gone, but that's gonna take forever as I've replaced every color with Gamblin. Love your YouTube channel and your content. Keep up the good work, Ryan. You are welcome, Dan. Yeah, Gamblin is fantastic. I believe he's talking obviously about the 1980 series that we have here. This is a great BRI alternative paint. I love the pigments, I love the flow, I love how they pop when they're dried, and I love them for a multitude of different painting styles from wet on wet traditional. We actually did a video on this if you want to check out in the top right corner, but uh, I'm glad I can introduce different materials to you guys, whether they be BRI alternatives because you don't want to support BRI or just different products that may be in your, your region or area that you have better accessibility to, or you just want to try new things. And there's something new out there that you want me to try, you know, I'll be more than happy to try it out. Leave me a comment down below. Maybe you want me to try out some like metallic paints or different mediums or things that may help uh, you on your creative journey. I'm always open to trying new products and I love trying them out. So do me a favor, leave those comments down below. All right, we got a doozy of one here. We got one from George Apostolou. Hopefully I got that right. Sorry, dyslexia is kind of a bitch at times. Hello, I've recently started painting and your videos were always top quality in helping me. I have a question if you can answer. I wanna make some liquid black because where I live, you can't buy them. I've been told that you can use midnight black with some liquid white. I have liquid white from a previous order. Can this work? I don't have linseed oil though. I can find some, but I don't know if it works with liquid white. Happy to help you out, Dan. Well, when it comes to liquid black, essentially it is a very thin medium with black pigment paint. Now you can use virtually any black, midnight black, Mars black. I would probably prefer midnight black just because the way I like the color. Generally when it comes to blacks, it depends on how their color shade shifts from either red to blue. It's up to an interpretation of what you like more. Now, I wouldn't recommend mixing black with liquid white because you're gonna get more or less a liquid gray. You wanna have a stronger black pigment, which I generally use for adding shadows on top of a lot of things to make them stick. So if I was you, yes, if you can get it, linseed oil with midnight black would be your best bet. I think I have some actually right here. Yeah, Windsor Newton uh, linseed oil is great. If you can get the water soluble kind, I actually prefer that more. So that way it's a multitasker for other things you want to use. But if you can't get this, like you said, you know what? Other mediums work as well. You can get hemp oil, um, walnut oil. There's a bunch of different ones. I think I made a video on it, which I'll put up in the top right corner here. Those might be more suitable for you or more available for you in your region or even art store. If you don't have any of those, you know what you can do? You can actually take some 
mineral spirits or thinner and introduce it to white pigment paint. It's gonna make more of a white wash, but it'll still be liquid enough for you to paint on top of, but it won't be as fluid or as creamy base for when you wanna do certain things and it's gonna dry faster. But those are kind of the answers I would give to you to help you out with your liquid black conundrum. Sure, there we go. Oh, and if you were talking about acrylics, Golden makes a lot of uh, liquid mediums that work great for acrylics if you're trying to make a liquid black. Made a video on this too. There's some retarders, some thinners, and some gloss glazes that'll all give you more longer drying times and make your paint flow. Did a video also up here in the top right corner, so check it out. Okay, moving on to Marco Diostolic. I hope I got that right as well. He just wants to let me know uh, and that I'm helping with melons. It's really showing me how to make shapes after forming the peaks. He's still struggling with trees as he showed us one of his artworks. Trees are tough. In this photo that you have here, or sorry, this painting that you have here, I see you're doing a lot of distant trees, which I'm a huge fan of using a fan brush. And if you really wanna nail distant trees, just get a spare piece of canvas paper or even cardboard that you gesso and learn just the motion of coming in and jagging down. I did a three minute painting where I show this and I even go more into it with the tutorial where I explain it, where you gotta kinda go in and like pull, in and pull. And the reason you go in and pull is because the fan brush is gonna bloom out to different ways when you first push it. And when you go in and pull, you're making the bloom kinda go back up to a fine point, which makes it look like far distant pine trees. Once you got that, take a one inch or two inch brush, blend out the bottom base of those trees because it's gonna be softer down there and it's gonna have a sharper top. Then you can take your fan brush or one inch brush and you can gingerly fluff and push it back and farther away. The longer you do this, the, the, the taller the peaks are gonna get and also the more pigment you're gonna wipe off and push in the background, creating more distant tree effects. Also, if you really, really struggle with making defined distant trees that have more distinct ability, and I'm sure that'll work, things that have more detail, I mean, um, using a dagger brush or a angle shader is great for this as well. That's actually what Tally did in one of his examples where he was taking the trees and showing you how he kind of just like paints in just little segments. The angle that brush helps out a ton. So I would say start there, but if you need help with any type of particular tree, hey, we just did a video on that as well that you can go back and watch and Tally will show you how to make awesome trees. All right, time to move on to Twitter and we're starting with Jacob Water. Hey, I think I nailed one finally. He writes to us, followed your YouTube video first time painting, always been a sports guy, but the college life has opened me to many new things. Thank you so much for getting me started. You're welcome, Jacob. You know, this doesn't get talked about enough with creativity. Having a creative outline or having a creative outlet can be a life saver and a de-stressor, especially when you have a lot of bullshit going on in your life, you know, family, friends, marriage, work, college. Having something that you can de-stress and uh, concentrate on for just a couple hours really helps out your life. And good luck to you, Jacob, in college. I want you to be super successful for a selfish reason because I want you to make a lot of money so you can help support my channel and my dreams. <laughs> but let me help you really quick. When it comes to your artwork here, I'm gonna be honest. It's a great first start, but it's a crappy painting. But the good news is we can go up from here and allow me to help you. The first thing I want you to do is tape off a horizon line so your horizon is straight. Just use a piece of masking tape. From here, we're gonna work from our lightest colors to our darkest colors. Lay in your yellows, then your reds and oranges around your yellow, then your blues and purples around that color. Take your two inch brush that's dry and slowly start blending in everything from the yellow to the orange to the red to the purple to the blue, whatever section you wanna go into, and really, really work it in. Push it into that canvas material. That's gonna create a beautiful, minimalistic sky that's gonna really stand out. And now you have that straight horizon, you already look like you got a beautiful sky. So tear that tape off and we can move on to clouds. Clouds can be tough, so I'd recommend getting yourself some solvent, gambling-free solvent gel. It's gonna really make that white paint be more creamier. So when you take your fan brush or filbert or whatever brush and start whisking the clouds in, it's gonna flow off and not contaminate. I can tell you had some contamination because you're pushing so hard, but things weren't really going well. Think like a cloud and only worry about the top of your cloud. Once you got the top, just blend in everything naturally underneath and you'll start to push it back by gingerly working the motions with your brush. Then when you get to the water, just put in your water lines from side to side. It's gonna create a nice beautiful effect down the middle and then slowly work on the waves by adding white sections in there. And you know what? Just in a few moments of me explaining that, you're gonna have an awesome landscape 
uh, oceanscape painting. Now, what I recommend after this, paint it three more times. This is an easy painting to kind of hone your skills on. Don't move on to the next thing. Sit here, work on this, because once you build your confidence, you're gonna feel like you can start tackling anything, all right? Stick with it, and I can't wait to see your next piece, buddy. All right, moving on, we've got Tony M. Oh, thank you, Tony, for having an easy Twitter name. Tony writes, made my Bob Ross brush rack today. Thank you for the idea from your video on YouTube. You know, Tony, you are welcome, and this looks awesome. Yeah, we made this a while ago. This is something that I recommend everybody make if you got some spare time. Mine's a little messy because I've been kind of cleaning up and moving my room around, but it's something that you can just easily take your brushes or your knives and stick on here and keep organized. I actually first built this for one particular reason, to help keep my paint brushes organized while drying because I could wash them off with some cleaner and conditioner and put them up here and let them drip dry and also keep the bristles in an easy spot. There's also another way to make this that's a little bit cheaper, but this looks obviously the best where you can take some foam and whatnot. I'll show you that in another video. But you know what, Tony? Thank you for making it and I'm glad yours turned out fantastic and I recommend everybody have something like this. Next we have up is Cam Picasso and Cam Picasso sends us an artwork or actually two pieces of artwork and writes, love your videos, bro. They are really helping me. You are welcome and thank you for the support, Cam. You know, I see in one of the photos there, it kind of looks like the painting that we have right over here, which was one of my three minute paintings with the uh, gradients in the mountains and the trees here. And it shows that you're struggling. One of the biggest things that I noticed from at least the photo, is it looks like you're having some mud mixing issues. One of the things to get smooth paintings and smooth gradients is you really have to sit there and work the paint into the canvas. Sit there with your two inch brush and really push it in. You're not going to hurt this painting nor this material. In fact, watch, just gonna drop it. Once you've worked everything in, it's really easy to go and apply paint on top of that. Let me go back to my phone here as I look the, as the pictures. It looks like you have more of triangle topped mountains, which again, like in one of the uh, previous comments, really add bumps and ridges and kind of shake your hand a little bit. It's gonna add a more natural motion to the mountain. And if you wanna go and see why mountains suck when you paint, check out this video up here. It's gonna give you so many tips on how to really think about how to put mountains in. One of the biggest tips is use your palette knife and carve in a section so you can visualize where your snow is gonna go. Now I think you tried snow, but I'm not sure. What you really wanna do is make sure you accentuate highlights with lighter color paint and shadows with darker color paint. That's really gonna add the 3D effect. And obviously, you're still just starting out. One of my favorite videos that I did, and it's not a great painting, but it's a building block painting, is one of the first paintings you should start painting as a new painter, where it shows you how to do a simple landscape with sky and some grass hills and a little bit of water. I recommend checking that video out. I don't know how many cards I could put in the top right corner, but I'll make sure to put videos all down below for you. Um, that's really a building block video. Everybody watches Bob Ross and Bill Alexander and all these awesome painters, and they feel like they can jump right into it. I thought so too. Wrong. We can't, you gotta start simple and small. But once you do that, it's so easy to start building up from there. So start with something way simpler. Try painting these again and really take your time when you're doing the tutorials that I teach. Because even though I do it like in three, five, 15, 30 or an hour, you should, you should be spending, no joke, four to 10 times that long as a new artist. Really, really working in and honing your craft. Moving on to Christopher, another easy name. Dude, I just started WoW painting. Thanks for your tips. Mind out of the gutter, man. <laughs> How about we leave the jokes to the guy with great hair on this channel? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I need another one involving FFS tips. The hell is FFS tips? Oh, for f sakes, probably. <laughs> All right, you can tell jokes. How do I bring my one inch and two inch brush to a sharp pointed edge for foliage? Am I not applying enough paint? Thanks for uh, thanks in advance. Should you ever see this? Hey, I did see it. Um, this is one of the hardest things and I don't really excel at this because I find it to be a waste of paint a lot of times. And yeah, the answer is you have to apply a lot of paint. But in my personal opinion of doing this, you have to apply the correct amount and type of paint. When you're taking a, let's just take a one inch brush because that's all I have here, I think. You take a one inch brush and you put it in your paint. If you're gonna put it in a firm paint, you're gonna get a, a nice firm edge, but the minute you apply it, it's gonna kind of like poof away. And you're gonna kind of break that chiseled edge that you created as you go down for things like your pine tree. Where I've had success, Christopher, is when you add a little bit of medium or already have a paint that's a little 
a little more creamier, not fully creamy, just like one step down from fern paint, if that makes any sense to you. And when you take your brush in there and you start really loading it up, what I want you to do is when you take it, start wiggling it through the end of the paint on both sides. When you wiggle it, it's gonna do two things. It's going to move the paint to the ends of the bristles. And when you wiggle it, it's really coating the entire brush for that chiseled edge. Do it on both sides and when you pull it up, then you're gonna have that chiseled side. And when you apply it to your canvas for things like your trees, it's not going to uh, fray. It's gonna, it's gonna hold because there's so much more creamier paint in there that it's creating a better bonding material inside your bristles. But you know what? I actually don't like creating trees that way. Mostly because I find it, again, to be a waste of paint and it's kind of hard. You have to spend a lot of time cleaning up your brushes because you just put so much pigment and paint in your bristles. But I'd rather take something like a fan brush where I can use minimal paint and kind of get the same effect. But that's just my personal opinion. If you want to experiment and try, you're more than welcome. Uh, it's just, I'm kind of like a frugal painter. When I have to spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars on things like paints, mediums, you know, Funkos and all that fun stuff, I don't have so much money to waste on paint. So uh, that would be my advice. Let me know how it works out for you by leaving me an awesome comment down in this video below. And you know what? I'm glad I can help you all out. If you want me to help you out more, I'm gonna try to do this more often. And I think in live streams, like I said, in one of my updated videos, I'm gonna answer some YouTube channel member questions and also review their art live online on this very YouTube channel. Does that sound like something you're interested in? Hey, guess what? You need to become a YouTube channel member because I'm gonna start with them and I'm gonna help you grow. So do that by doing that by doing that below. You know what I mean. Become a YouTube channel member, hit like and subscribe while you're down there and comment. And also you can check out these videos over to the side and I'll catch you all later. Later, oh my God, I'm hungry. I need to go get some food. Take care and of course, peace. <laughs>